Hello guys, and welcome to Matt's Beamer. Today, I'm going to film my friend's car. They have plenty of classic and modern cars that I can film. So please subscribe if you would like to see any old classic and modern Soviet and American cars. Also, please let me know what type of car you would like to see on my channel. This car is up for sale because they have too many projects going on. And since I haven't seen a Ford Escort Mark III for years, I thought I'd give it a film. Ford created the Escort name in 1968. The Mark I Ford Focus took over the last generation of Ford Escort. And the Escort van was taken over by the Ford Transit Connect. This car here is the Mark III which was made from 1980 till 1986. They were available in a three or five door hatchback, a three or five door estate, a two door cabriolet, or a three door van. The saloon version was called the Ford Orion. They were built in Germany, England, Spain, and Brazil. This car here was built in Germany back in 1981. There were many choices of engines in petrol such as the 1.1s, the 1.3s, and the beefy 1.6. One of the 1.6 variants had a turbo. All the engines available back then were inline fours. They also had a diesel engine, which was available in the 1.6. There were two choices of manual gearboxes, either the four or five speed, or there was a choice of a three speed ATX automatic. This car here has the four speed manual. The third generation had the code name Erica. I think the pressures from the English market made Ford keep the Escort name as the Escort name was big news. But I have also heard that it could be due to the Germans who were concerned as it was also the name of the battle march by the Germans in World War II. In 1982, the Mark III took over the sales of the old best-selling car the Ford Cortina. The Mark III Escort was made to take on the Mark I Volkswagen Golf, the Mark II Honda Civic, and the Mark I Vauxhall Astra. Let's have a look at my friend's 1981 Mark III Escort 1.3 GL. I believe this car is finished in the wonderful color Caspian Blue, which is one of the nicer blues on the color chart. They had so many choices of colour back then. Starting with the front of the car. As this is a GL spec car, it has the better looking black plastic grille. In my opinion, it is much nicer than the gear grille, which had all the chrome stuff on it. In the centre of the grille is Ford's blue and white oval. The headlights on this car are separate units to the indicator lenses. The bulbs are the halogen type. Be careful when cleaning around the indicators as they are quite sharp. I know this from experience when cleaning my friend's XR3 convertible back in the 1990s. Let's just say there's blood everywhere. This car seems to have an aftermarket bumper on the front. I don't know what this bumper is off, so if you have any ideas, please comment down below. The side reflectors are covered in some kind of black gunk. I do not know what it is. Under the front bumper, we have the valance. The towing eye is located to the left hand side underneath it. The bonnet is typical Ford from this era, with the air vents near the windscreen. Here is where the broken aerial is. I think it's an aftermarket one. The wipers and front water jets are located above the bonnet line and are pretty simple to repair. I believe that the window trim around the windscreen was once upon a time chrome before time took its toll. The steel wheels in this car are 13 inches. This wheel here is the odd one out. The matching one 
is located in the boot. The wheels are wrapped in 175-70 R13 tyres. The front brakes are solid discs and the suspension is made up from independent mudfits and struts and cool springs. The black plastic mirrors on this car are not electric but need to be adjusted with your own strength. I believe once upon a time that the window trim around the windows was chrome but now it is covered in matte black paint which is peeling away. The door handles in this car are black plastic and they have a separate door lock. Both front doors have a door lock each. This car also has central locking which still works. Back in the 1980s it was common for cars to have black rubber trim going down the sides of the doors to help protect the doors from idiots in other cars who like banging their doors into your door. Some random mud flaps. Here is the fuel cap which needs a key to open it. I am so glad that newer cars have this locked away behind a door. The rear wheels in this car are the same size as the front ones. The rear brakes are drums and the suspension is independent with pressed lateral arms, trailing tie bars and coil springs. The car has a ground clearance of 120 millimeters, a width of 1640 millimeters, a height of 1337 millimeters and a length of 3966 millimeters which is smaller than a new Ford Fiesta. Heading around to the back of the five door hatchback, we have the chrome styling around the rear window. The window is also hinted. Back in these days, the heater elements were big thick orange lines. The rear wiper is stuck on top of the hatch lid like a tail is stuck to a dog's bottom, especially when it begins to waggle. The jet washer is also located here. This car has been debadged on the rear. To open the boot, you need to press this lock in. I like the very basic taillight design on this car with their vibrant colors. The number plate bulbs are located on the rear bumper. It seems that this car was originally from Switzerland before coming to Russia. The toe and eye is located just down here. Let's have a look inside the car. For some reason, this car has two different locks, hence why there are two different keys. This is the flathead type, and this one is the round-headed type, which was a bad design in my opinion. As you can see, this car has central locking. Oh look, a random door protector, and a reflector from the 1980s stuck on a door. The Mark III is a very simple car, which in my opinion was average for its days. There is plastic all over the interior. The interior is finished in blue, which I guess was the fashion back in them days. Because my first car, back when I was 15, was a 1985 E30. And that also had the same color blue interior. Along the top of the dash are the air vents for the front and side front windows. There is also a speaker grill located on top of the dash. An odd little bit of pointless storage. There is also a kind of a shelf for keeping stuff on, on the passenger side too. Along the front edge of the grey part of the dashboard are four air vents, very basic and made from black plastic. Each vent has an open and close wheel and a directional adjuster. Just below the air vents is the car's entertainment system. I won't go into any details, but it has a radio, a CD player, a USB, auxiliary, an SD card slot, and Bluetooth. Below the radio is something that proves it's a 1980s car, a massive ashtray. From a time when smoking was supposedly cool, back before they found out it was extremely dangerous. There is also a 12 volt power socket. Below the ashtray is a small storage slot. And if you move down even further, you have a bigger storage area. This car here is fitted with the four speed manual transmission. To select reverse, you need to press down the gear stick. 
while also shifting to the left and pushing forwards. This car does not have a centre console, so you can see the whole handbrake and where the seatbelt system is attached. Over to the driver's view, the steering wheel is of the four spoke design. It doesn't feature power steering. The setup is a rack and pinion design. The instrument cluster is very 1980s with the white font and orange needles. On the left we have the speedometer with mileage up top and trip mileage at the bottom. And this is the trip mileage reset knob. In the centre we have the coolant temperature gauge and the fuel gauge. There are also warning lights above and below. On the right hand side you have an analogue clock. I'm sure that the higher models had an option of having a rev counter. This black knob is for adjusting the time. To the right hand side of the instrument cluster we have the heater system controls such as the zone control and the temperature adjuster. This here allows you to adjust the fan speed. This car has three speeds. The hazard switch is located just behind the steering wheel. The left stalk is for the indicators, the main beams and the horn. There are more light adjustments on the right hand side rear stalk. The stalk that's the nearest to you controls the windscreen wipers. Press the button on it to make it squirt over the windscreen. To the left of the wheel are a few blanks and the rear fog light switch. On the opposite side you have some more blanks but you also have the heated rear window switch along with the rear wiper switch. There is some hidden storage just behind this little door here. There is also some more storage under the fog light switch. If you want to pop the bonnet you need to pull this orange lever just under the steering wheel column. The rear view mirror is pretty basic. You will have to tilt it down yourself. The interior light in this car has a freeway switch. The driver's sun visor doesn't feature a mirror, but the passenger gets one. This old headlining reminds me of being in my friend's Fiesta Mark 1 years and years ago. They were the good times. Everybody, except the driver, gets an interior grab handle above their head. Let's quickly open the door. As you can see, the car's door is wrapped in a blue vinyl. These doors feature wind-up windows, some storage space and an armrest. It's amazing how small the door sills were back then. Here are the blue manual seats. This lever down here slides the seat backwards and forwards, while this wheel here allows you to adjust the backrest's angle. Let's jump into the passenger side. The glove box in this car is lockable. Not even my BMW 1 Series has that. Squeeze the handle together to drop the box. Inside this box is an average size. Not of the best quality either. But it does also feature an extra hidden compartment which isn't really hidden really, but here you go. Let's jump into the back. The rear doors have different features to the front ones. There is an ashtray and some kind of vent. The rear doors also have child locks. This car has no headrests in the rear, but it does feature three seat belts. This is my leg room, and my headroom is not the best. The front seat though was all the way back. Let's fold the rear seats down, pull this little loop here, and release the tabs behind the seat. It's not difficult, but compared to the new ones, it is a bit of a faff. The back of the rear seats are made from metal. Let's 
have a look inside the boot. Press the lock in and the boot will pop. Up top is a rear parcel shelf, which I believe are quite rare now. The boot is an okay size, though shallow compared to today's models. This car also has little light in the boot. Under the floor is where the spare wheel is located. Let's start it up. This car has no back box on the exhaust, hence why she sells the way she does. It is a project car. The engine on this car is the 1.3 four-cylinder lump which puts out 68 horsepower and 100 newton meters of torque. The power gets sent through to the front wheels. The car has a top speed of 98 miles per hour and has 0 to 60 in just over 12 seconds. It's believed that the car will do around about 32 miles per gallon. Thank you for watching this video, more in-depth videos will start appearing soon. Please take care and thank you.